Good morning. Welcome to this gathering. We are so glad to be together on this first Sunday of May in 2022. We are in spring. We will keep telling ourselves that. And whether you join us here in person or you're joining us online, welcome uh, to this gathering. Uh, we are SSUC, Spiritual Seekers United in Community. And welcome to this inclusive circle. Uh, we seek, don't we, to live out a generous spirituality that is not about beliefs, but about living fully and belonging, about embracing beauty and loving deeply. And so we gather to learn from each other about that. We gather to seek wisdom. We gather to practice those uh, ways of living that we might more deeply do those things. And so we welcome uh, the entire human family. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter uh, the color of your skin, your size, your gender identity, your culture, your sexuality, your religion, your spirituality, your experience. None of that matters. We welcome the whole human family, and so we're glad that you're joining us. As is our custom, our words, if spoken well and from the heart, can more easily lead to actions. And so we speak words of acknowledgement that we gather here in Edmonton on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting ground and gathering place and traveling route to the Cree, the Soto, the Métis, the Dene, the Blackfoot, the Nakota Sioux, and many other First Nations. And we acknowledge all those whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and for whom we endeavor to build relationship in our journey toward reconciliation. So in this spirit of gathering, of being together, of acknowledging our past so that we might live more fully into the present, Let's open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to each other and to the wisdom of life. And we light our candles wherever we are this day. Those of us here in the gathering space at SSUC will light our community candle. And we invite those of you at home to light your candle with us. We light our candle in the midst of whatever mix of darkness and light lives within us and around us. And we light our candle honoring the light of creativity, the creativity of our planetary home that brings light out of darkness over and over and over again, giving us the gift of a new day and the creativity of an ever-evolving universe. 
We light our candle reminding ourselves that we're born of fire, that great flaring forth that birthed the universe. We're born of light. And we are ever learning how to make of ourselves a light, to be light keepers of hope and possibility, and to be bearers of light in the thoughts that we hold, in the words that we speak, and in the actions that we undertake. So as we gather, we seek to strengthen our intentions to live in those ways, where we will reflect light for the world. So we share words of intention together, reminding ourselves, grounding ourselves in the way we hope the world will be and the way we seek to be in the world. We pray with one another. How amazing it is, how little we experience, how little we see, how little we hear of what is really said, how little we sense what is around us, yet we're inspired by something more to open our eyes to what we would not see, to unstop our ears to what we would not hear, to bring our awareness to all we might know and feel and be, if only we were attentive to it. May we be caught up in wonder at the love around us, the potential for amazement, the possibilities for connection. May we experience the intricacy of creation and our place in it, and what we, through our love and presence, might make of it. May we commit ourselves to this unfolding task. In our Time for All Ages today, I have a story and a conversation, and I know that we all can participate in a time for all ages. It doesn't matter our age and our size. Hello, everyone. Glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about, um, in Kid Spirit, you're talking about nature, and you're going to, uh, this is the start of a new kind of unit on nature. And uh, today I want to talk about creativity. Do you think nature is creative? I'm wondering if we can all in this room think of all the different ways that nature is creative. How does nature show us that it's creative? Do you have an idea, Raisel? Without nature, it would be creative. You're right. Without nature, without trees, without, a, without that stuff, we wouldn't be able to make things out of wood or anything like that. Uh, all of the ways... Without trees and plants, I don't think we would be uh, breathing oxygen very well. We, we need those to, to breathe. We have this relationship with each other. and We can be creative with what we find in nature, and nature is creative too, isn't it? It's amazing. Um, I want to read a story today about creativity. It's called The Dot, and it's by Peter H. Reynolds. Peter H. Reynolds is a bit of a genius, I think. All his stories are good. If you ever see his name, you should read it. Not just his name, his books. <laughs> Here is the dot. The art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Oh, boy, I don't know about you, but um, I hate looking at an empty page when I don't have any ideas. It's really hard to have an idea. Vashti's teacher learned, leaned. Vashti's teacher leaned over the bl blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. <laughs> Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. 
Vashti grabbed a felt-tipped pen and gave the paper a good, strong jab. There. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper towards Vashti and quietly said, Now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment. Well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into her art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn. Her dot. All framed in swirly gold. Hmm. I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never-before-used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted. A red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow and she discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting. Lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. I think that's my favorite one. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's many dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line, even with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's swiggle, and then she said, do you know what she said? Sign it. Yes. <laughs> Sign it. Oh, that is the dot by Peter Reynolds. Sometimes you don't have to be so smart, so, you know, completely have millions of ideas, sometimes you just have to start somewhere. Blank page, no ideas, a problem you can't figure out how to solve, sometimes you just need to start with something. And we all can start with something. I love that that is the message of that book, and it speaks to our creativity. We all have that in us. Even if we're not artists, we can do it. So I invite you to Kid Spirit. Uh, Daisy and Ariane are awaiting, and I invite you there.
sometimes I wonder if uh, what we talk about in the time for all ages, if we really believe it or not. And today is one of those days. We talked about the fact that everybody is creative, that everyone can start somewhere. And I wonder if we all believe it. Uh, do, I just uh, want a show of hands in the room. You can put your hands up at home too, if you like. Who would identify themselves as creative in the room? That is many, but it's not all. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my mother. My mother is one of those people um, that would respond to that question and say something like, well, other people are creative, but not me. There's not a creative bone in my body, is actual words I've heard her say again and again in, in my life. And I think it's because her definition of creativity was focused on on a few defining experiences in her life. She never played a musical instrument, so she's not creative musically, according to her. Whenever she drew, it, it ended up looking like a blobby horse, she would say to me. And so she would say, I could never draw. And these two experiences, just with drawing and with with, with uh, no musical experience, those have defined kind of her sense of her creativity. I personally think she's wrong, but to each their own. I want to be a music nerd for a minute, do you mind? Um, <laughs> as if I can turn it off, I'm always a music nerd. Great, okay. Uh, I want to talk about the pentatonic scale. And you're saying the what? That sounds like a scary thing, but uh, penta means five. A scale is um, a set of notes that go together in a certain way. So a pentatonic scale is five notes that go together. Uh, this scale is one of the wonders of the musical universe, in my opinion. And um, I want to show you a little bit about why that is. And to do that, we need Bobby McFerrin's help. So here he is. Watch. Ba, ba. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's 
interesting to me about that is, regardless of where I am, anywhere, every audience gets that. But it doesn't matter, you know, it's just, you know, the pentatonic scale for some reason. The pentatonic scale for some reason. Uh, there's a lot of technical things we could talk about the pentatonic scale, but never mind, that's all boring. That was really exciting and interesting. Uh, if you can imagine a piano keyboard, maybe you can, if you've ever sat at one, or you, you at least know that there's black and white bits on it, right? And um, the black bits are organized into groups of three and groups of two alternating. And uh, a really fascinating thing about the way uh, a piano keyboard is organized is that if you played only the black notes, you would be playing a pentatonic scale. There are five of them. Uh, do, re, mi, so, la, skipping fa and ti, if you want to go back to, you know, sound of music kind of stuff. Um, and as music teachers, if we want to get new players, whether they're kids or adults, it doesn't matter, improvising and playing something that sounds good right away, like first lesson, first lesson, how to make a new player feel really good that they're learning something and that they sound good, you have them play only on the black keys because there's something about the pentatonic scale. You really can't make a bad musical sound with the pentatonic scale. They, all the notes go together, either one after the other or all together. Kids love that, adults love that, and like McFerrin's audiences wherever he goes, we just have something within us, something innate, something natural that knows these musical patterns. And we get it, and it sounds natural. Those uh, people in that audience may or may not have felt creative, but they were, they were singing without any training. They were singing by watching a silly man jump on the stage. How creative, how beautiful. And that creative spirit is in, at work in all of us. We give it a home and it links us to each other so much that it surprises us when things happen like that. It surprises us because we didn't think we had that in us. It also happens, though, in other areas of life. It would be easy for me, a musician, to talk about the creativity of music all day long, but no. I mean, that's an example because it's, it's from the world that I live in and know. But this happens in every area of our lives. You've had an idea, and then you share it with someone and they build upon it. Maybe you're the person who didn't have the idea, but you've been thinking about it, and you think, oh, that's kind of neat. I, what about if we did this to that or the other? And the suggestion excites us, and we keep adding and changing until that idea might be much different, but probably ultimately better. It happens when we come upon a challenge that we can't solve, even if it's the simplest of challenges, like why my freezer ice maker will not stop making ice. <laughs> yes, that's a real-life weekly example. Thank you. Refrigerator. But somehow, because I kept the text number of the guy that fixed our dishwasher, he was able to text me back and say, well, just do this. And I'm like, oh, I didn't think of that. This is the creative spirit. It happens alone. It happens within us. It happens with each other. Often to our surprise, we are always awed when a creative solution comes up, even if it's not our own but especially when it's ours. I want to share with you a reading from uh, the book of Luke in the Christian tradition. This comes from the 17th chapter. When asked by the Pharisees when the world Jesus described would come, he answered them, you won't be able to observe the coming of that realm people are not going to be able to say, look, here it is, or over there. On the contrary, 
the world as we imagine it could be dwells within you. This passage has been so meaningful to me over the years, and uh, perhaps it can be for you too. As we move and evolve into a more expansive understanding of our world, our lives, our spirituality, I'm reminded by this ancient wisdom that somehow, somehow miraculously managed to escape the narrow constraints of what has happened in the Christian tradition over millennia. It escaped the codification and the dogmatization of particular theological understandings. And it still manages to speak after all of these centuries. It says that the most important work of transformation in our lives doesn't come from some God out there, out there above us somewhere. It doesn't come from some Messiah, some person that we're waiting for. It doesn't come from anywhere other than within us. It comes from and dwells right within us, in our gut, in our heart, in what we know is true, in how we know what is right to do, in the wisdom we have and learn and share with each other. So, You know that famous quote that gets attributed uh, here and there and everywhere? It seems to everyone under the sun. It reminds us that we need to be the change that we wish to see in the world. This is intimately linked with the fact that everything we're looking for in the world comes from the creativity within us or within others standing right next to us. If we are going to be the change, then we all need to be the change. And where is that impetus coming from? It's coming from ideas. It's coming from within us. It's coming from the creativity of our spirits. It's coming from our intentions and our desires and our will and our commitment to acting on our values. And it's up to us to express it in the ways that will mean something. Be the change means that we have to look at all the ways that this realm is within us already and be it. Be an active action word. We have to somehow live it. And that very act of living out our principles requires the creativity that each of us will find within us. Uh, Listen to theologian and contemporary scholar Matthew Fox. Uh, This is from his book entitled Creativity. Creativity is not a noun or even a verb. It is a place, a space, a gathering, a union, a where wherein the power of creativity and the power of imagination join forces. And where those two come together is where beauty and grace happens and indeed explodes. Creativity constitutes the ultimate in intimacy, for it's the place where the sacredness around us and the beauty and sacredness within us are most destined to interact. Creativity looks and feels different in everyone, whether it's in the area of the arts or in the kitchen or in the workshop or at the computer keyboard or at the cafe in conversation with our friend, with the work of our hands or our minds or the caring of our hearts. It's unique to us all, but there is no vocation and no career and no activity that doesn't call upon us and our creativity. Which means that if the world we are seeking, if the world we wish was, 
is to come to be. It means we, all of us, have to cultivate the creativity within us. As Matthew folks wrote, creativity isn't a noun, so it's not a thing, it's not a verb, it's not something we do. He says creativity is a place, a space, a where. Hmm. So if that's the case, then we need to ensure that there's room, that there is space in our lives. We need to allow the interaction to happen with what's going on around us and what's going on within us. This is hard for those of us that like to schedule our lives, who, for me, you know, everything is on my Google Calendar, and, uh, and if it's not there, then it's in a detailed checklist on my phone that I have to accomplish. This is the way I don't forget things. It is also, unfortunately, the way I leave out creativity. Because it's hard to schedule time and space and the interaction of imagination and creativity. So that's our calling, I guess. To realize, as Peter Reynolds reminds us in his story, that a dot can be beautiful. A dot can be the one thing that we have and do that matters. So let's find our dot or our squiggle. What is that for us? And then go with it. Yeah, I love, I love that image. I, I love that. So... Expressing that happens for us in so many ways, in thoughts and words and ideas and movement and action and art and speech. Expressing whatever we know is inside us because we're full of that creativity. I hope that that might inspire us all to where we might be our most authentic and integral and full selves, being part of solutions that we didn't know we could be, and that's pretty exciting, even if it just starts as a dot and a squiggle. So may it be for us in so many diverse and creative ways, and may all of your ice makers turn off and on when they should.
one of the ways that we have expressed ourselves as a community has been in our shared prayers of joy, of challenge. And in the last uh, two years and a bit, we have tried uh, with some success to be able to share those pieces of our lives with each other, whether it be on Zoom or through video chats or online or email or whatever, but it's not the same as being a community that gathers and is able to share with one another. And so um, we are going to do that this morning. We are going to share uh, those things that are our prayers for the world and for living. And um, there are two microphones in the room. For those of you at home, uh, we may not have you live, but uh, we invite you into this time of prayer as well. And uh, I would like to invite us into this time of sharing uh, in kind of the realm of creativity. We are uh, seeking different ways in which we are um, seeking to be more creative, seeking uh, ways in which our world might be more creative, and also celebrating when we see it. So, uh, I'm asking these questions. When, where am I expressing creativity? Well, where am I? Where are we? Where is the world expressing creativity? Think of these as the things we celebrate. What are we seeing? What joys, what amazing things are we seeing where creativity is at work, where wonder is around us? And I'm also asking, where does the world need creativity? Think of these things as the places where, and the, and the needs and the issues where we need to bring to bear the world's creative energy. And um, as we share those things with each other, uh, we have a response. Uh, we will share with each of those prayers, we honor the creative spirit in us. So, I open this time. Um, I'm not going to run a microphone to you, but I invite you to come to one of the microphones uh, if you've got a prayer to share, uh, a joy, a place you're seeing creativity in the world, awe and wonder, a place where that creativity and and uh, is, is, is desperately needed in our world. I invite our time of prayer. I just wanted to share that I'm 50,000 words into the first draft of my first novel. Oh my gosh. So that's pretty exciting for me. Amazing. We honor the creative spirit in us. Thank you. Uh, I recently came across a really interesting group of words. It said, we are all groping toward becoming. And I thought that was so apt. And one of the things that I am so grateful for in my life is that I got an education. I first came to Edmonton in 1949, and I took two years of education, and I paid my own way, and my parents said, that's enough, you're only going to get married. And, 
I think marriage requires quite a bit of education, actually. <laughs> but in 1967, I was at UBC taking a Bachelor of Library Science, and a counselor there said that at that time, only 5% of the women in Canada were going to university. So think what it was like in 49. And I just, if I hadn't had the education that I got, my life would have been incredibly different. And I believe in education, I love teaching, I've really enjoyed my students. Let next lifetime, I want to be a teacher again. We honor the creative spirit in us. I explore creativity at home in my house by exploring new recipes and uh, my quilting, uh, all beginning, but definitely it's an exploration and an opportunity to create. And sometimes even being in this space is a wonderful op option for creativity too, because um, as much as all our lovely beings are around us, um, how they're positioned and how we, I see the reaction from other people, I, f I find creativity within that too. Thank you. We honor the creative spirit in us. Um, I have the great privilege of working with individuals with disabilities and I see their creativity every day and how they adapt when they're doing art to maybe they can't hold a paintbrush this way but they can hold it that way or how their support works. So I'm always marveled by their creativity. We honor the creative spirit in us. I think, I think one of the things that I have enjoyed over the last two and a half years is a creativity that I've seen in several radio plays that Pam Patton has developed and involved me, by the way. <laughs> and this has led me to uh, work with her and suggest a word play that we might do that represents to me what SSUC is all about. I like playing with words. And I have sent her a version to see what she will do with it. <laughs> Chris, I think that's one of the creative things that has helped us over the two and a half years of the pandemic. We honor the creative spirit in us. I want to recognize the ongoing conflict in our world. in Ukraine particularly, but in many places, and the creativity not just needed, but absolutely required by leaders and citizens to make peace. We honor the creative spirit in us. In these and many other ways, that creative spirit continues working, and we honor it 
and keep our eyes peeled for it at every chance. May it be so. I want to share a couple of invitations and particularly for those of you at home who haven't had the opportunity to be in the company of others this morning in this room or those of you who can get home very quickly and get on Zoom, an opportunity to have a bit of conversation with one another about this theme of creativity where we're experiencing it in our lives and where we seek it for our world. Uh, an opportunity to engage in this morning's theme with each other. You'll find the link on our website and a time just to be in a, a, a conversation um, face to face on, online, um, an opportunity to uh, talk and engage with each other. I also want to uh, express opportunities for us to support the life and work we share in this community with each other. Uh, there's an opportunity this morning to purchase grocery cards. David's here and will be in the foyer uh, following our gathering. That uh, supports our life and work as we receive a bit from those um, merchants for uh, the sale of those gift cards and if you need uh, to purchase groceries soon, opportunity to purchase some grocery cards here this morning. Thank you for the ways you support us with your ongoing uh, pre-authorized remittances and also with your regular donations. There's also a box at the back in our space here this morning and we welcome any support that you are able to offer to the ongoing work of our spiritual community. I also want to take this moment on behalf of all of us to wish Chris a wonderful, restful, renewing, creative time on his sabbatical. He'll begin his sabbatical leave this week, and we hope that it is for you just a good uh, opportunity to uh, relax, to be in a different environment, to not have the daily, weekly responsibilities of life in our spiritual community, and that this might be a renewing time for you. So we wish you well, and we wish you health, and we look forward to seeing you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Yes, he's being invited. For those of you online, he's being invited to uh, turn off that list that's on his phone and to put his calendar away and to just enjoy the spaciousness of these days. So we ask in song the question we ask of ourselves each day in the light of all we know and deeply know, how then shall we live?
light changes from moment to moment across the day. We lit our candles at the beginning of our spiritual gathering, and now we change the light as we prepare to move from this time into all that this day and all that this week asks of us. We change the light from our individual flame into the collective cloud of energy. We are together. And may the energy that we create together empower us in this time to widen our openness, to expand our sense of possibilities, and to keep us attentive to the light that is within each of us. With the energy of our songs and our prayers and the wisdom we've shared, may we move from this time together into the gift of this day. And we send the light of our love and support to you, Chris, in this sabbatical time. Blessed be.